So one of the things I want to talk to everybody about is my seven key success principles to immunotherapy. So immunotherapy obviously is one of the greatest advances that we've seen in cancer treatment. And one of the things that's really interesting about it is that what really changed and allowed immunotherapy to work was figuring out that the immune system has breaks and taking off these breaks actually allowed the immune system to see the cancer. However, there's one thing that we know, a lot of times the immune system doesn't see the cancer at all and these drugs don't work. That gets to my first success principle, what we call heating up the immune environment. And so this is actually getting immune cells to see and infiltrate the cancer. And that's very important because without that, these other drugs like Opdivo and Keytruda, they don't really work because they take off the brakes. But if you use the car analogy, the car isn't even started. So you need to start the car first before you take off the brakes. So using drugs, injecting into the tumor, off-label drugs, all these actual principles will affect this heating up the tumor environment. And so these are things that we can do to get the immune cells into that in tumor environment and allow immunotherapy to work. And the success principle number two is targeting hypoxia in tumors. And so tumors metabolize, particularly a lot of glucose, they metabolize it in low oxygen. And these areas of low oxygen in the tumor are actually very suppressive to the immune system. And not just locally, but actually globally in the body. And we can use imaging techniques to help identify some of these areas in the tumor. So interesting, you know, when a patient has cancer everywhere, there may only be certain areas that are hypoxic. It may not be every location. And then we target directly these areas in the cancer with either injecting chemotherapy into the location or chemotherapy agents that, that actually target these hypoxic regions or ablating, or you can do it with radiation as well. But you need to destroy these areas of hypoxia because they're significantly immune suppressive and it's very difficult to start an immune response when you have overriding hypoxia. And the third success principle is the gut microbiome. And so the bacteria that are in your intestines actually have a lot of interaction with the immune system. The lining of the intestines has a significant amount of immune cells and the products that these bacteria make from metabolism interact with those immune cells and can control the immune environment. We know certain bacteria are associated with a positive immune response and a positive response to immunotherapy. And also now they're identifying some that have a negative response. And so, of course, uh, we have some ways to boost these, particularly uh, bacteria such as Acromantia mucophilia. There's now a probiotic that contains that. Uh, Bifido brevi, Bifido longum also have probiotics. Uh, fecal bacterium prosnazi, another one that you can boost with, particularly with prebiotics. We also know that certain ones that are in typical probiotics, such as lactobacillus, may be negative. So these are things you don't want to take. The, the biggest thing for success is to have a diverse microbiome. So having a high fiber diet seems to support that. And so we certainly have the game plan to help the microbiome and to maximize the chance of response to immunotherapy. And the fourth success principle is off-label medications. And so these are drugs that are actually used for other things like diabetes or for high cholesterol that we can actually use to help treat cancer. Now, the one thing is, these are not primary treatments. So don't believe that just taking off-label medications are going to help you know, get rid of the cancer alone. These are only to assist immunotherapy. And so there are numerous drugs, you know, drugs that are normally used to treat parasites, there's drugs to treat high blood pressure, uh, drugs for cholesterol, drugs for diabetes. These all can be used, and typically the way they work is they help kind of heat up that immune environment. They get immune cells to infiltrate into the cancer they block certain pathways that enhance the immune response. So again, these are only to support immunotherapy. They're not the primary agents, but definitely, you know, we try to do everything we can to maximize the chance of success with immunotherapy. And the fifth, and I believe the most important success principle is intratumoral immunotherapy. And that's actually injecting immunotherapy drugs directly into the cancer. Now this allows for many things. One is that we can use multiple combinations. You could never use these combinations systemically in a patient. You know, when you start using three, four, five, or even more immunotherapy drugs systemically in a patient, you would get very uh, horrendous autoimmune issues. But in the tumor, that's not necessarily the case. And where you want to teach the immune system to work 
is in the tumor. You want it to see and attack the cancer. And so intratumoral immunotherapy is certainly one of the most powerful treatments for cancer. And as I said, I believe it's the most important success principle. The sixth success principle is actually advanced testing to evaluate the immunotherapy escape mechanisms. So cancer particularly can escape immunotherapy. You can treat it. When you start treating with certain drugs, it will upregulate other pathways and get around those drugs. And so we need to understand what the cancer is doing and how it may try to get around these therapies. So we use advanced techniques. One is nanostring, which is a DNA barcode technology. This actually allows us to evaluate almost all the known receptors, enzymes, the things associated with the tumor and the immune environment to understand what the cancer is doing and what the immune system is doing so we can know how to appropriately adjust medications. In addition, we can actually look at the metabolism of the cancer, which can have an effect on the immune response. So nanostring is a very diverse and advanced technology. Also, we have you know, multiplex immunohistochemistry where we can do regular staining of the cancer, looking to see what receptors are changing. So again, so we can kind of adjust and, and figure out what's the best treatment for the patient. As, as these technologies are getting better and faster, this will be something that we can do more real time. Right now, it's a little bit delayed, but you know things keep improving and obviously the future will be to treat, check, and then adjust the treatment appropriately based on this technology. The seventh success principle is the mental aspects of immunotherapy. So we know that there's a neuroimmune axis. So your nervous system communicates with the immune system and vice versa. And so patients who have a very hopeful and positive attitude seem to do much better. Obviously, I think it enhances their immune response. And doing things like exercise, yoga, uh, meditation, all of these really help boost the immune response. I think patients are much more successful when they're involved in these activities.